Oshkosh 23 here, the Timber Tiger aircraft booth, and there's, there's several things going on here, and one that's really kind of close to my heart is this Jenny behind us. One of the very first, well, the very first aircraft that I ever started uh, working on was a plans built early bird Jenny. That's how I learned to weld through that process, read plans and all kinds of stuff, so it's really cool to see here. And Nick, you are tied to this airplane as well, so let's start off talking about the backstory there. All right, so I saw this particular airplane for the first time in Colorado when I was 14. Um, and it's really what introduced me to home-built aviation. I was like, holy smokes, you can actually build an airplane? And so I always told myself I was going to build a Jenny one day. Um, we started with the Ryan, of course, because it was a, a good marketing move and, and a solid entry into, into what we're doing. Um, and, of course, we got the Speedster going on. And... It's kind of funny, when I had the ST over in Boulder, I met the owner of this airplane again for the first time in 20-some years. And uh, over the summer, we ended up buying the rights to it, and things kind of came full circle, and now we're making kits. So I can tell you a little bit about this airplane, because I've built most of the frame of this. It's a chrome molly steel fuselage, uh, mostly aluminum wing with some weldments that attach, uh, uh, we call them spreader bars, what do you, what do you call that? On the, the ones there? We call them compression struts that compression struts right and uh, there's a lot of little uh, little fittings there you got the, uh, the the guy wires and and um, it's fabric um, it's a really cool like bare bones nostalgic airplane and it's it's a lot of fun it's a big learning curve but you're, you're putting this in kit form correct so the early versions were designed in 1985 um, they were plans built and about 25 years ago there became kind of a vacuum for support and um, that's where we come in now is we offer the kits. And so the kits have been upgraded with new hardware, um, uh, a new control system as far as the elevator goes, and 12% um, larger fuselage, but and a, and, a, and a gross weight increase, of course. Um, the things that we're doing with the kits are not outside of the realm of what has already been done. So about 100 of, the, of these have flown worldwide. And so we have all that data and all those experiences to pull from and really make the you know take the best of all those plans built airplanes and turn them into a kit and so now we have control over quality we have um, full-time support if anybody needs support I keep all my customers names right now in my cell phone first name basis uh, evenings weekends that's the kind of support that I like to provide for my, my builders um, but it's just times have changed since it was first designed and um, it's, it's time for a reboot yeah, we're, we're talking like 20, 30 years ago. Yeah, it's been a long time. <laughs> so originally back then, the, the engine of choice pretty much was uh, of the, the Geo Metro type of engine, um, which is actually what I was going to use, a three-cylinder with a belt drive. What are you going to be offering as engine options for this or suggested engine options? Mm -hmm. So um, obviously with 100 of them flying, there have been all kinds of engines used. Um, we're going to stay with the most popular ones, which were Honda conversions, um, the Geo Metro Suzuki conversions as well. Um, Rotax 582 was widely used, and it provided an excellent power to weight and was actually one of the highest performing models. Um, Rotax 912, I think a lot of people are going to use that. Um, people have used UL Power, HKS. There's one flying, actually two now that I know of, flying around with a, a two-cylinder Franklin, which is a little light on power, so I wouldn't recommend that. But it is, um, on the plans built versions, doable. On the kits, we recommend anywhere between 70 and 100 horsepower. Now you said you did a, about a 12% increase uh, scale. Uh, is that for, for overall um, payload or just the ease of getting in and out of it? or? So um, a couple things about it. First off, uh, people aren't getting any smaller. And then, um, so yeah, cockpit space is the huge driving factor. Um, and it bumps our scale up a little bit to where it fits the landing gear better. We didn't increase the size of the landing gear. There's no re reason to. So by increasing it that 12%, we can make it into a much more authentic looking Jenny replica, um, which this one here is actually the most authentic I've seen as far as the plans built ones go. Um, but there are a lot of the plans built ones out there that aren't quite, you know, it's more fun scale than true scale. And um, as you've seen with the Ryan, we, we strive for authenticity anywhere we can get it. So. So this one is already obviously in um, in the works, so you can probably give us a price point today. What are we looking at to get a kit? Yeah, so the basic kit starts at 6900 
and that comes with a welded fuselage and blueprints. That way, if you have your own line on raw materials, hardware, you can save some money there. And that kind of keeps in with the traditional theme on these of plans building. Now, if you don't want to go that route and you want all the kit, kit options we offer, if you take all of our kit options and stack them together, you're looking at about 20 to 25 into your kit. Um, so if you go the inexpensive route, you could have as little as 20 to 25 in your airplane flying done. Um, but I think most people are going to have right around 40 flying and done. Yeah, that's not bad. And I can tell you firsthand that there is a lot of work in welding the fuselage like this up. Uh, first, you have to build a jig, which that's work in itself. And then, of course, cutting all the tubing and fish mouthing and all that kind of stuff. It, if you want to do it, it's great. But it is very time consuming. And I'll, I'll probably share some photos of my back in my teenage years when I was working on these stuff. But it was fun. I learned a lot. But it de definitely, if you don't have the time, that's not a bad price for a fully welded fuselage. Yeah, it's not. And it's it's pulled from a lot of experience having done welded fuselages. So, um, you know, and that's the thing about supplying kits, too, is the fixed ring time is huge. And we can do that once and then make fuselage after fuselage. And so that helps everybody out. We are partnering with great companies like Dynon Avionics at Dynon.com. AirTech Coatings at AirTechCoatings.com. Clemens Insurance at ClemensInsurance.net. South Mississippi Light Aircraft at FlySMLA.com. Foxtrot 95, Calhoun County Airport at FlyFoxtrot95.com. Edge Performance at EdgePerformance.no. Take a moment to go visit their websites at the links found below in the description of this video. And visit our website at ExperimentalAircraftChannel.com for events, our video library arranged in easy to find playlists on specific topics and so much more. So what is the, uh, it's a very draggy, high, high lift, high drag airplane, but what are the operating parameters of it? So they're known to stall right around 35 miles an hour. They tend to cruise around 65 to 70 miles an hour. Um, people have had them up to 85 miles an hour, but that's... I mean, there, there comes a certain certain point when a brick doesn't want to go any faster. But that's not what this airplane's about. This airplane's about that that nice Sunday evening type of flying and just an emotion, a feeling. It's not about the airplane. It's about something so much bigger than itself. Awesome. All right. Well, let's give uh, everybody the contact information so they can see this online. More examples of, of this one behind us and how to order plans in the kit. So obviously we have our, our um, Facebook page, which we, we, we update quite a bit, but we also have um, www.timbertigeraircraft.com, and um, you can get a hold of me at nick, N-I-C-K, at timbertigeraircraft.com, and we're going to be doing some substantial website updates right after Oshkosh to reflect uh, a little bit more information on this. So Nick, you've been very aggressive at bringing, uh, let's say, they are new aircraft to the market uh, of nostalgic look and feel. What is there any end to this? Like, what's going to be next? It's like you, you got us all excited about bringing all these different models here. Um, I'm really curious of what might show up here next. Um, if I told you, I'd have to kill you. <laughs> but um, in a nutshell, uh, we do have a lot of different designs on the drawing boards. Um, obviously, you can't take too big of a bite at a time, so we're focused on on our current offerings and what people don't know is as we're building one new airplane I'm in the background designing the next. I was gonna ask you like what is your key to like the rapid prototyping of like are you just that fast at CAD, CAD work or what? I'm relentless, obsessive, I can't control it. It's just who I am. This is where I was born to be. It was in home building. Um, I can't turn off my brain in the middle of the night. I'm constantly crunching numbers and and coming up with shapes and ideas and manufacturing methods and I think that's really that's just the key is a, an, an unnatural unstoppable obsession. <laughs> well I'll be honest when you first kind of started teasing this um, with us on social I was like yeah that's cool but we'll see if it gets into production and then like you actually did it and like I don't want to say record time but like very quickly and then the, and then the next and so it's like yeah if you love it we love it so yeah. keep doing it. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, well, uh, yeah, checking in here, uh, Timber Tiger Aircraft 2023. It's really hot here. If you guys are joining us here on the field, definitely wear some uh, sunscreen and drink lots of water. It's, it's a hot one. <laughs>